Hi, this is Zanibar, and I'm here to teach you some more about PPR. Today we're going to learn how to use Blender to pack materials to be ready for uh, Second Life. Now, today we are going to be using Blender 4.2. This is because it f almost completely supports all GLTF extensions, which will be important in the future for future content in Second Life. Before we start, we'll need to enable a few options. In Blender 4.2, let's go to Edit, Preferences, and we'll want to go to Add-ons. We'll want to search for GLTF, and we'll bring up GLTF 2.0 Format. And here, we will want to make sure that Shader Editor Add-ons is enabled. We're definitely going to need this for later. Once that's enabled, you can make sure that it is saved by hitting Save Preferences, though it should auto-save. Okay. Now that we have everything set up, let's go to the shading tab in this new file. Now, as you can see, this is the default setup for shaders within uh, Blender. And almost everything we'll need is here. But we'll need to do one more thing. We'll need to do Shift A. We'll need to do Output. And the add-on that we just changed adds this um, option here, the GLTF Material Output. We'll just need this, and we'll need to put it just anywhere. Okay, now we have everything we need to start. So, for this demonstration, we are going to be using Fence 008A from Ambient CG because it provides example of alpha. And this is important because 4.2 has changed the alpha workflow that we'll need to show. I've already downloaded it, and I've already extracted it and we have all the files that we need. So now we'll go back over to Blender and we will start to drag and drop the color, opacity, normal GL because the Second Life is an open GL uh, renderer and GLTF expects open, no, open GL normals. And then we also need the roughness, the metalness, and the ambient occlusion. Alright, so that is all of our maps. So, let's uh, sort these real quick. Roughness, metalness, color, and opacity. Okay. So, let's do the easy one first. We'll change ambient occlusion to non-color because it is non-color data. We will drag its color to the occlusion node of the GLTF output. So, the reason we have to do this is because Blender does not support ambient occlusion natively. So, the only way that it knows to export is through this node. This also goes for thickness, but we're not using thickness right now. So, let's do the same for roughness. We'll do non-color, hook it up to the roughness uh, output. We're done with that. And then we'll go to the metalness, turn it to non-color, set it to the metallic. As you see, that cube has changed pretty dramatically just from those two nodes. And then color, we don't need to do anything about it. It's probably already in the RGB space. In most cases it is. We'll pop it into base color. Now for normals, we'll need to set it to non-color because it is not color data. And for this, we'll need to grab the color node, drag it out, let go, and we'll want to type in normal map. And we'll want to choose color. It's important because otherwise the normal will be incorrect if you do if you just drag it to there. So now we can drag the normal over to normal. And now we have normals on this wire mesh. But as you can see, there is no alpha yet. Now we need to deal with the opacity. So we could just drag it immediately to here. And it would look mostly right. However, in this state, when you export it from Blender, it would be blended. In most cases, you do not want to use blended due to alpha sorting issues and just general performance loss. So instead of this, what we're going to do is we are going to drag out the color like we did normal, let go, type in math, and we will want to go down to... Uh, round right here 
and then we will want to go and take this value to alpha. As you can see, it changes dramatically how it renders on this view. As you can see, it's now crisp and there's no soft edges. This is what we want. We want only off or on alpha. The material is now set up and ready for export. To do this, we go to File, Export, GLTF 2.0, and then we'll go to the Fence folder since that's the best place to put it. Now, you can use either GLB or GLTF. I prefer GLB because it's easy to uh, share with others. We're going to name this Fence 008A GLB, and then we're going to Export. Okay, let's check the folder. All right, we now have a GLB that is named Fence008A. Now we can go back to the viewer. Now I'm using Alchemy, so I, all I have to do is drag and drop this file into the viewer. If you are using any other viewer, you will need to navigate. You will need to navigate using Build, Upload, and Material, and navigate to this folder. But I can just do this. And let's see. And judging by how everything looks, it look like, looks like everything has imported properly. And our alpha mode is set to mask. Since this looks good, we can save. And then we'll just wait for it to upload. Alright. There we go. Our material has uploaded. And to check it out, let's raise a cube. We will go from legacy materials over to PBR Metallic Roughness, and we will drag this material file over to this swatch, and it should apply. And it does appear to have properly imported into Second Life. If we really wanted to check to see if the ambiclusion works, we can always just turn back to opaque. And yes, it does appear that ambiclusion is properly functioning. And that is how you pack a PBR material into GLTF within Blender. I hope you learned something today, and I hope you can put this knowledge to good use. Zengbar signing off.